Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 60 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about cookies in ASP.NET. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 57, 58 and 59 of this video series. In ASP.NET, there are different techniques to send data from one web form to another. We have discussed about cross-page postback, context.handler object, and query strings in the previous sessions of this video series. In this session, we'll talk about cookies. In the subsequent video sessions, we'll discuss about session state and application state. Now, in general, cookies are actually used to store user preferences or other information that is client-specific, but they can also be used to send data from one web form to another. Now, cookies store small amounts of information on the client's machine. Now, let's look at a simple example of using a cookie. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an ASP.NET web application project with two web forms. On web form one, I've got two text box controls where the user can enter their name and email. And once they enter their name and email, and when they click this go to web form two button, we want to harvest those two values and then create an HT, uh, I mean, create an ASP.NET cookie, populate that cookie with these two values and write that cookie onto the client's computer and then redirect the user to web form two. And on Web Form 2, we have two label controls. So what we want to do is when this Web Form 2 loads up, we want to retrieve the cookie that is written to the client computer, read the name and email values, and then display in these label controls. Let's see how to do that. Okay, so I click the button control to generate the event handler. So here we need to create the cookie object. And to create the cookie object in ASP.NET, we have a class called HTTP cookie class. So HTTP cookie, and the object is cookie is equal to new HTTP cookie. And then the constructor of this class, you know, there's one constructor which takes one parameter, uh, the name of the cookie. So let's give this the name as user info. Later we can use this name to retrieve the cookie. Now, if you look at uh, this HTTP cookie constructor class, there are two overloaded constructors. So there is another constructor which takes the value as well along with the name. Now if I have just one value to store in the cookie, then I can use this constructor. But then we want to stay, store two values, the name and email, so I cannot use this constructor. So I'm just using the other constructor where it accepts just the name. Okay, so now we want to store the email, uh, the name and email address. So to store the name, I'm going to use a key called name. Okay, so in the cookie using name key, I'm going to store whatever the user types into text box txt name. And along the same lines, I'm going to use a key called email to store the email value. Okay, so so far what we have done, we have created a cookie object, given it a name, and stored name and email within that cookie object. Now we have to write this cookie object to the client's machine. So how do I do that? In order to write or give something to the user machine, we use the response object. So response dot, there is a property, cookies collection property. So cookies to the response cookies collection property, I can add an HTTP cookie object. So I have this HTTP cookie object, so let me pass that to this add method. So that's gonna add the cookie object to the client computer. And then all we have to do is redirect the user. So response.redirect, we want to redirect the user to webform2.aspx. Okay, so now once the user is on Web Form 2, when the Web Form 2 loads up, we want to read that cookie from the client machine and then retrieve the values of name and email and display them within this label controls. So we'll do that on the page load event. Okay, so how do I read the cookie? It's very similar to reading query string values. To read query string values, we use the request objects query string property. So request dot query string property. But if I want to read cookies value, I use the same request object, but I use the cookies property. So request dot cookies. And then if you look at this, this cookies uh, property, it takes in the name of the cookie. So if you remember, we have created a cookie with name user info. So we want to retrieve that same cookie from the client's computer. So give the name of that cookie. So let me copy the name. Let's go to webform2.aspx.cs and then give that. And look at this, uh, request.cookies of 
this property is going to return an HTTP cookie back. So I'm going to store that in a variable. So HTTP cookie, I'm going to call that cookie is equal to whatever we get back. And now, as usual, we use the keys. So I use the name key to retrieve the name out of the cookie. And then I want to assign that to label name label. Okay, and let's do the same thing for the email. So LBL email dot text is equal to cookie of, if you remember, the other key is email. That's it. But then the important thing here to check for is check if the cookie is null. If not, if the user directly lands on this web form and if the cookie is not there on the client machine and if you try to retrieve the cookie, you might get an exception. So it's always a good practice to check you know if that cookie is null or not null so if cookie is not null then try to retrieve the value for name key and email key okay so let's see if this works as expected so let's run the application now we can enter the name and email of the user and then navigate to web form 2 and we should be able to read the values from the cookie okay so name i'm going to say test email i'm going to say email test and let's click to web form 2 and look at that I see those values okay that's fine um, now let me type or navigate away uh, from this website to maybe google.com okay so I've gone to google.com and then when I click the back button I come back to web form 2 and look at that I still retain those values okay but on the other hand I close this browser window and I open another browser window and then type in the URL of webform2 directly and I press enter. Look at that, I don't see the values now. That's because the cookie that gets returned to the client computer, you know, there are two types of cookies. You know, there are persistent cookies and non-persistent cookies. The type of qu uh, cookie that we have written just now to the client computer is a non-persistent cookie, meaning that cookie will not be saved permanently to the client's computer. Uh, instead, the cookie will be lost immediately after we close the browser. Okay, so and how do we create a non-persistent cookie? If you don't set the expires property, look at this. When we were creating the cookie, all we have done is we created a cookie object, specified the keys and values for them, and we added the cookie. We didn't specify the expires property. Now, when you specify the expires property, you can tell when the cookie is going to expire. So until that point of time, the cookie will be written or permanently saved onto the client computer. But again, the client has the option to delete the cookie. So if you don't add the expires property, then you're creating a non-persistent cookie. And what is the duration of a non-persistent cookie? It will be alive as long as you have the browser open. The moment you close the browser, the cookie also will be thrown away. Okay, so let's now see how to create a non, uh, I mean a persistent cookie. To create a persistent cookie, all you have to do is before you add the cookie to the um, user's browser, you will say response dot, I mean the cookies object, the cookie object has got this expires property. So if you look at this expires property, it accepts date time. So let's say I want to store the cookie on the client computer for the next 30 days. I can set that date time to the current date time, date time dot now returns the current date time to that add days. How many days do I want to add? I want to add 30 days. So now this cookie is going to be written physically to the client computer. Even if I close the browser window, you know, the cookie is still going to be there. Let's see that actually in action. Let me run this now and then let's enter the name and email of the user and then once we click the button, it's going to write a persistent cookie onto the client's computer. So let's say name is test, email is email test and I click go to web form 2. Okay, so I have this information here. I copy the URL, I close the browser. And if you remember the previous time we have done that, the values were, were not there because the cookie is immediately destroyed when the browser is closed because that's a non-persistent cookie. But now since we have specified the expires property, the cookie is going to be physically present on the client computer for the next 30 days. But on the other hand, I can go ahead and delete the cookies. For example, I go, can go to Tools, Internet Options, 
and then this is IE9 so in browsing history I can click delete and look at that cookies is checked here when I click delete it's going to delete the cookies that are present on my machine so I click OK copy the URL and then let me close the browser window reopen the browser window now that persistent cookie would have been deleted and look at that I don't get that information okay so cookies can be broadly classified into two types persistent cookies and non-persistent cookies uh, persistent cookies they remain on the client computer even after the browser is closed you can configure how long the cookie remains using the expires property of the HTTP cookie object whereas non-persistent cookies if you don't set the expires property then the cookie is called as a non-persistent cookie because non-persistent cookies only remain in memory until the browser is closed on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.